what do you think of the direction that the world is going in right now? Like where we're at at this moment in history, what's happening over the next few years with the, you know, with the increase of psychedelics, with the increase of medicines, there's, you know, like things are moving through. And there's, there's also an increase of um, what seems to be like chaos, you know, the fires or floods or hurricanes or politics or divisions. And if it's not COVID, it's now whatever pox has come out, you know, like, I can't even keep up, you know, it's, it's something. Um, do you, you know, do you have a positive like hope for humanity? I mean, I do think the earth will be okay without us, but what about humans? Okay. We're okay. This is another one of the uh, unconscious meta patterns. The, the idea of like, what is the future going to be so that we can adapt to it? What's the future going to be? Is it going to go this way? Is it going to go that way? Imagine though we were sitting down at a restaurant and, and you said, Charles, what's the future going to be? Is it going to be that we're going to have pizza or is it the future going to be that we have the, the soup? Like there's something wrong with that question. It's like, but, but you can decide, here's the menu. We're being offered a menu right now. And in case we hadn't really seen clearly what's on the menu, these coming years are showing us more and more clearly. COVID showed us the direction we had been headed. Like none of the lockdown measures were anything new. None of the migration of life online, the, the social distancing, people becoming more and more distant already. Mm -hmm. um, the, the you know migration of education online, work, dating, uh, the obsession with safety and hygiene, um, like all that stuff, uh, the, the, the phobia of death, like the, the technologies of control, the censorship, the location monitoring, the contact tracing, like all of these things have the like surveillance cameras, like this is basically we were shown like a fast forwarded version of a direction we've been headed. And it's like, yeah, there's a menu item. This is what you've been choosing. Do you want this dish? Do you want this future? So I could say that in the next three or four or five years, um, we are being shown what the world could be, positive and negative. One of the main things we are being shown is what is the world gonna be if we persist in the habit of us versus them, which I see on all sides of every issue, where, where the news feed, right or left, it's all, here's something to make you outraged. Here's something that proves how horrible the other side is. Here's another, here's more fuel for your indignation. And it's related to that orientation I mentioned earlier. Which side is he on? That whole way of seeing the world as a war between good and evil leads to endless war. And I'm not saying that there are no evil or corrupt manipulative, ruthless, psychopathic people out there. But as a fundamental organizing principle for the world, it creates the reality that it assumes. So that's one thing that we're being shown. Um, as for will the planet be okay and so forth, I have a very different view of this than most people. Um, I don't think that the biggest risk is that humanity goes extinct and nature recovers. I think the biggest risk is that humanity persists and the world dies. And we live in a future of you know, synthetic food, lab-grown meat, uh, carbon machines to, to suck the carbon out of the air, uh, earth as an engineering object to maintain the, the balance of gases, like, like and, and uh, retreating into the metaverse into virtual reality because the external reality has been denuded of life. That's the direction we've been heading for hundreds of years, actually. And I do not think that ecological collapse will make us say, oh, we can't do that anymore. We're not gonna be scared into a different path. We're not gonna be forced into a different path. We have a choice. And the choice is, do we serve life? or do we serve ourselves? So even that, that rhetorical 
strategy of scaring people into being better environmentalists because of the bad things that will happen to themselves otherwise or to humanity otherwise, that is actually part of the old mindset where really what we have to orient toward is what do we love? How do we care for it? What are we devoted to? Who are we really? What world do we want to live in? Not can we survive? Not safety first, not a security state, a national security state, a psychic security state. That would only make sense if you are immortal, if death were not a fact, but death is a fact. Another powerful thing that psychedelics can bring actually is an encounter with death. So you take that in and, and it's, not, it's no longer about how do I survive forever, but it's about what do I give to the world? What do I create with my gifts? Then here we return to purpose. Like we want to leave the world a better place than we came into it. We want to, even after our names are totally forgotten, 5,000 years in the future, something of us will still be there. It's what we have put into the world. So this is uh, the choice that we are converging upon. And I, my, my, my work and, and my medicine, you know, is to illuminate that choice and to call upon the part of, of each one of us that is here to serve life and beauty on this earth.